Hi folks, uh, we're gonna give this another try. We did a little video earlier on for some of you people, uh, but there were issues with sound because this is a live event, which turns out are unpredictable. So as soon as Tara shows up, we're going to shift the sound over to her, mute on this end, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have a nice little poetry reading with our Go de Garance. Fibers Project meets poetry. Hello, everybody. Okay, welcome back. It's a whole new world, and there are new and exciting tech challenges every step of the way. So we're going to do take two of um, the Côte uh slash Blue Metropolis slash Tommy Ross um, collab that we were working on. So a little bit of background. Um, this was um, this project is the result of four interviews that we did. It was me and the two wonderful artists that you see before you, um, Armin Alexandrin of Côte and um, it was four one-hour interviews, which um, we recorded in full, um, in which we talked about, talked through every step of their process. Um, those interviews were then transcribed painstakingly, like we just, every step was painstakingly transcribed. And um, we wrote down, I wrote down every single word, every pause in what they said. Um, so I, so that I could make sure I picked up on what their, their speech patterns were. And then um, what I did was I worked on some, I made a, a suite of mostly found poetry, which was um, lifted verbatim from things that they said. There are of course, ways that I left words out and um, left spaces intentionally in order to kind of impose my own voice sort of over top of their, of their words. Um, and, uh, and then like play with meaning and stuff like that in that way. Uh, and then there are also three uh, three poems in the suite that are also in my voice and have nothing to do with the words that they used, but were inspired by their their speech patterns and the things that they were talking about. So I'm going to read the, those poems in full, um, and I'll tell you which ones are um, which ones are are found poetry and which poems are in my own voice. I think Gaudi Garance's process and project is um, is sort of the perfect little synecdoche for um, what we're what kinds of um, what kinds of work and what kind of romanticization I think is like required of um, individuals in the larger structural process of moving away from um, the kinds of industrial issues that are causing and um, aggravating climate catastrophe in the Anthropocene. Um, so, which is I think um, a worldwide addiction to convenience and speed and a limited understanding of efficiency as being just about um, the time it takes to manufacture something and a low cost of production, as opposed to the um, other things that have to do with time and cost, as in like cost to the world and cost to the future, um, and the time it takes for things to biodegrade, and uh, how long it takes to manufacture all of the versions of things that we're going to need to used to replace poorly manufactured things and so on. So I'll, I'll end with a, um, I'll end the introduction with um, the last paragraph of the, um, of the, the artist statement that I has posted on the website, which you can find at metropolibert.org. Um, if you look up Poetic Fibers, which is Armin Alexandrin told me near the end of our interviews that they had turned to textiles because they were tired of the false dichotomy between what is beautiful and what is necessary. It's important to note that I think that Armin and Alexandrin are trained conceptual artists. They were trained at the um, at uh, Concordia's very renowned um, uh, studio arts program. Armin and Alexandrin are the best kinds of artists, artists using art to be the best kind of person, which is a person throwing away binaries of beautiful and required and working through ways to make every crucial thing beautiful and make what is beautiful indispensable. The first poem is in my voice and it's called Obad from a Sheep Farm. 
before the sun gets up, you know, it feels like I can get it all done. It feels like I can turn it around. It's been harder since she left. The volunteers, they keep the worst of it at bay. But before the dawn cracks that old horizon, you know, and it's all possible still, no sheep gone unfed, no babies found froze to the ground in the night, no dogs bloodied, having mutinied their chicken charges. Maybe I'll even answer a friggin' email. So this is Found Poem 1, one of the better sweatshops, February 1st, 2021. Sewing manufacturing place, all industrial. Synthetic dyes on synthetic fabrics, plastic and dust. Used to print on natural fibers, but they phased it out. Wanted to get rid of the union. Labor issues, environmental issues, sourcing problems. It's going to last, last max a year and people throw it out. Going to last a long time is garbage. Loses shape, hide under umbrella terms. And this is one of the better sweatshops. One of the better sweatshops in Montreal. Found poem two, interdependence study. Maybe it was a little idealistic, I will admit, but whatever is worth buying is worth repairing. Don't pour the bath water in the sink. The plant gave us this process. Pour it out by the train tracks where there are weeds growing. It's going to nourish them. It's filtered by the plants. It's better to put it into the earth. Found poem three, untitled. Most plants two or three years before you can use them for dying. We did talk about dying. We talked about dying. What makes dying in a different? You have the right environment. Dying and roving. The color ends up in the water. Found poem four, Grandmother read. In the context of our interview, Armin and Alexandrine were discussing the cochineal family of beetle, cochineal family of beetle, sorry, a natural source of red dye found on several continents, all of which are related to the same common evolutionary ancestor. I was taken with the phrase an ancestor who was the source of all red, which is lifted verbatim from the transcription, and selected phrases to suggest an ancestor who birthed the concept of red itself. At some point before the continents separated, there was an ancestor who was the source of all red. Let's say you want red. You are limited by the size. I want one kilo of red. It can be a wine red. It can be any shade of pink or peach. Red, it's an awesome red, like, like more angry. There is one in Europe. I want one kilo of red. One in Asia who is not the same. They're all related. How else could they all give red? An ancestor, the source. Found beautiful yellow. In nature, there's so much yellow and brown. Everywhere in the world, there is yellow and brown. Six, grandfather blue. While you were gone, I was just talking about blue. We don't have a natural source of blue in North America. Blue is only indigo. Nothing about the plant looks blue. A very particular fermentation, urine, feces, blood, different cultures discovered it individually all over the world. They must have left a bucket of old leaves long enough, dropped a cloth and then blew. 
You have to keep feeding it. How is it doing? How is my baby doing? Indigo experts, all they do is indigo, generational indigo, inoculate, carry the colony on and on. You can spend your whole life trying to gain mastery over just one color. New world blue. All natural blue dye originates from indigo ferra or indigo plants and the relatives, a tropical plant which is not indigenous to North America. Indigo became a cash crop in the new world as a result of the European invasion of North America and its subsequent slavery economy. As a result of the labor and innovation of enslaved people, new indigo cultivars were developed in the southern United States in the 18th century. I dedicate poem, this poem to the life's work of those men and women. And this is particularly meaningful. I'm ready, reading this poem in my own voice. It's American Thanksgiving and I'm reporting to you from New York City actually right now. The invasions brought a lot of things. The great dying, the soaring crow of the end to 56 million never was a death like that measured relative to the world as it is, not before or since. In some approximated even Eden at Jamestown after clearing the Powhatan invaders lay the roots for blue. The long branches with their small leaves reaching, warning of what was to come. Projects like this take time, you know. In Charleston, they achieved it when they stopped shipping out the Kiowa slaves, Eliza Lucas and the South Carolina Business Hall of Fame. But where are the men and women she bought? Where are the testaments to the architects of the net, that new world blue? The laborers drawing the sky from the trees, their hands all stained with the saddest color. Found poem seven, Conversations with Plants. A lot of patience required, patience and respect. They have a whole personality. You're talking to the plant, negotiating, why can't you do this? What can I change? If and when I grow my own, I'll have to be, I'll have a more intimate relationship. I buy them ready-made, ready-made and dried and powdered. But I don't have favorites. I love them all. Eight, drop spindle. The best way to explain my thoughts during spindle, during spinning is when you're dreaming and you wake up and you don't remember your dream. Like a spider, incredibly thin, only as long as your arms can stretch. Physical to spin like that. Your shoulders hurt, but you're very mobile. I think people notice you on the bus, on the metro. People don't actually notice it that much. It's easier to learn the principle because you're in control of everything. You have to do everything yourself. You're adept enough to adjust to whatever imperfection feeding it to the twist, and that's how you make yarn, or cord, or rope, or anything, or whatever. People learn in whatever way. Nine, spinning wheel. It was a technology to save you from whatever work the drop implies. The pedal or pedals that makes the wheels turn, and the wheel is connected, and that's where the yarn is being fed. It's the size of the wheel and the speed of the pedaling that determines how fast it turns, how much you twist. And it's, at first, sometimes it feels like it can go out of control. Found poem 10, Unreliable Machine. It was the kind of thing I thought I would enjoy, taking all these disparate parts and making them one thing. The word machine is unreliable. Structures, behaviors, and material, grand gestures going from bits of fine hairs. They look like just a cloud, solid. They fall apart in your hands to something that is very solid and very protective. It's a piece of art, but you can turn it into something else. That's important. Rubia tinctorum, and this is in my own voice. Rose matter, common matter, dyer's matter, from family bed straw, coffee, matter like more angry. 
evergreen, turkey red, loamy preferences, sand or clay, food to some infants, small, wriggling larvae, hummingbird hawk moth. The outer layers are common. It's two years before it can soak something red. Matter can't help the hierarchy. You have to cut in deep to get, as what, to, get to what is refined. The outer layers are common. Bubble alum with, it, with its crystals to the mordant fixing. Mash with clay, alum, ammonia. And Vermeer parrot painted his Mary's blouse a matter lake. The French garance, a red so pretty it became a name. A war god's herb, great opener. Sending women to convulsions. Their small ones coming early, twisted, knowing things. Found poem 11, your body inside the installation. This is the last one. We gravitated towards each other, wanted to make things that are anti-modernity, useful. There's never an end, there's always something that could come after. The potential for something else. I thought I was avoiding conceptual art. What's the use of all these gorgeous things kept packed away in boxes with nobody looking at them? That stuff sticks to you. I thought I had rejected it. Sitting in those lectures, I was like, this is stupid. But here I am still like repeating all of it. Thank you all for coming to this take two of um, the live reading of Poetic Fibers, which is a collaboration between myself, Tara McGowan Ross, um, Gaudet Garance, the wonderful artisans you see in front of you, and Blue Metropolis Poetry Festival and Foundation in Montreal. Um, I'm reporting to you from Brooklyn, in New York City, in New York State, um, all the way to the Palais de Congrès in Montreal. I'm going to be quiet now because we're already over time, but thank you so much. You're all the best. And you, Armin Alexandrin, you're even more beautiful than you looked on Zoom. I can't wait to see you guys in person someday. <laughs> see you all soon. Bye, David. Mwah.